Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, January 12, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, let's start off with the daily chart. What's jumping off the page? How about the obvious? They traded up into the 200 period moving average we talked about. They spiked it and they closed below it. That absolutely is garden variety market behavior. Sometimes they come up short. Other times they spike them through. Sometimes they close above. Sometimes they spike them through and close below. All are normal garden variety market behavior. Now, let's read what happened. Let's read into the tape what happened. And then we're going to read further on different charts. Now, as we read the daily chart, we see... They did the thing, they spiked the thing, and they closed right below it. What they didn't do was get rejected away from it by the end of the day. They had some back and forth stuff, and we'll talk about that when we get into the intraday charts and inside the numbers. And by the way, I ran the live room today, and I can tell you two things. A, it's not easy to do. B, we had a whopper of a trade. We'll get to that later. So net-net on the daily chart, they're still okay. There's no reason they can't continue higher. Whether it will be tomorrow or not remains a mystery. We don't know yet. Can they pull back tomorrow? Of course they can. Could they pull back to, from a short-term basis, the most recent breakout area? And the answer is, yes, they can. Do we know they will? We don't. But in the morning, that's one of the things we'll be watching for. It's a potential trade setup. So here's what we're looking at from a big picture perspective. They start closing above the 200 and namely above 398. It opens the door for what? It opens the door for the gap that exists right here. And that number is officially 399.40. And then you start talking about the big fat round number of 400. We talked about this last night. Nothing really changes. They're just in the midst of doing the thing. Now, if and when they decide to fail before, if they decide to fail before they spike over 400, we'll address it at the time. But right now, we're going to say 400 or higher is on the table unless they start closing below some important stuff. And the first important stuff would be yesterday's closing price, 395.50. You might want to put that one on a sticky note for two reasons. A, because it's important, and B, because it's going to come back up later on when we get into some intraday stuff. Also, a little housekeeping, Monday is a holiday in the U.S. It's Martin Luther King Day, so the banks are closed, the markets are closed, and therefore will resume after the weekend on Tuesday. I believe the futures will be open for a part of the day on these holiday Monday type events. So it doesn't really impact anything. We'll resume on Tuesday. Something else that's interesting you might want to take note of, at present, we're in an on-time situation on the daily chart. So therefore, we don't know what will happen, but don't be surprised if you wake up to some kind of pullback situation on Friday. What's the 240 chart telling us? Well, they put in some kind of sign or signal of a trend change, but... Instead of trading away from it yet, they're going sideways. Why is that? Well, one of the reasons is because they have a gap up here that's yet to be filled. It's unfinished business. They came up short. There are no accidents or coincidences, so we look at it this way. The longer they take to fill the gap from this point forward, the more likely it is that the gap is not the destination and the destination is higher. Basically, said another way is, if they start eating time off the clock under the gap, having had an opportunity to fill the gap, they could have done it today if they so chose. Mrs. Market decided not to. So if they eat time off the clock, the destination is likely somewhere well above 400. What about the 120 chart? You have this tail. This is from the CPI release. They had some Kabuki Theater EKG type action in the morning. And that's one thing that 
traders want is volatility. So we were able to take advantage of the volatility that the CPI release provided. We were interested in how the market reacted as a result of the release. The Kabuki began around 8.30. They whipped them around. They provided us a trade shortly after the opening bell. They dipped down pretty good, but then they recovered, finishing well on the day. This is a bullish sign. It is one of these upward wedge patterns, if you will, but nonetheless, it still is an uptrend, and the trend is your friend until she throws your shit out the window. Again, we have the gap up here, and boy, when I drew that line in, it sure looked like it was filled. Let's check out the high. The high was 398.49, and this gap is 398.70, so it's the same number. It has not been filled. Unfinished business. Hourly chart, you have an uptrend. They're eating time off the clock. You have a big breakup candle here. They recaptured the debacle from this morning in the first hour of the day. The hourly chart is bullish. Doesn't mean you can't open down on Friday, but on close today, the hourly chart is bullish. How about the 30-minute chart? And there's a method to the madness. There's a reason I'm bringing up this chart, and we'll go down a few more time frames because I want to point something out. This was explained in the live room today, and it had to do with the trade. It had to do with what was likely developing later in the day. Now, what was discussed in the live room today, what was discussed, what was likely developing, and then what happened. So we'll start out with the opening range. That's the candle ending at 10 o'clock. So it's some kind of a reversal candle because of the CPI data release and the volatility right after the opening bell. The next candle, they ran a test of that breakdown candle high. They didn't close above it, but they started what's called a pullback pattern. They already ran a test of the high. Now the question becomes, are they going to get rejected at the high and come all the way back down and completely fail? Or are they going to try and work their way through and formulate a pattern that you can recognize on the chart having an understanding of where you'd be wrong? And that answer is yes, and we'll see that more when we get into the notes, but this is really important to discuss it now. We can also state simply that above the opening range high, the bulls would be in control of the tape, but they may be in control of the tape before the opening range high, and that's part of the rub. How about a 20-minute candle? Same routine. Big breakdown candle. When they reversed, they immediately ran a test of that candle high, and instead of being rejected, they actually ran some time off the clock to go higher, and this was what was discussed in the live room. These are all the things that are A, taught in the course, lazy e-mini trader, B, discussed in here all the time. Everything is consistent. It's the three-pillar approach like I discussed last night and many times before. 15-minute chart. Now, here's where you can begin to really see something else developing, and this is also something that we were interested in looking at in the room. So they ran the test of the first candle high, the big breakdown candle on this 15-minute chart, and then they put in a breakup candle. Now they're beginning to run some time off the clock in a bullish pullback formation inside of the candle, inside of the candle. It's like a pattern inside of a pattern. So what happens is the market's telling you that, hey, this is a signal that it wants to go lower unless they can recapture the high. But they're not going to recapture the high right away all the time or ever. So in this case, they run a test of the high, but instead of collapsing back down, they really just begin based on the fact that they had a breakup candle first. That's what catches your eye. Now are they pulling back to make another move higher? This is called hashtag reading the tape. The 10-minute chart, big breakdown candle. They start to climb up the candle. They can't really close above the candle, and they start to go sideways. Looks very similar to the 15 in terms of what they were actually doing. There's just more candles because there's less data in each candle. Not every chart will tell the tale of what's going on. You have to find it. That's where the part art form, part science comes in. It's the intersection between art and science. Let's run through some inside the numbers. And you'll want to see this because 
you'll want to see why the trade happened. Again, it's a learning opportunity because it's based on the same stuff we discuss in here each and every day. So we've got the Kabuki thing going on, so this is a zero dark 30 note, but we'll just lay the groundwork. I just want the big picture when I sit down in the morning. So here it is. Let's say they continue higher. What's the extreme up and the extreme down? That's what I'm looking for first thing out of the gate. Well, we've got the 200 period moving average around 398 and a gap slightly higher. Here's the daily chart. High of day was what? 398.49. Big picture. It's what jumped off the page at me. Same routine, whether it's in these videos or first thing in the morning. And then we cite some upper stuff just in case they do the we're running away in a melt-up operation thing. Now we've got an extreme on the downside. We're talking about 391. We're talking about 388. This is first thing in the morning. And we say they'll typically whip them around back and forth for a few minutes, pick a direction, and go. Let's see what else we have as the day gets underway. Right out of the gate, the pre-market thieves, this is after the data release, 832, I'm writing this. They hit the 200 period moving average discussed in last night's video before the decline back down. So they hit it, they pulled back. So they did the thing you expect them to do. Whether the first move is up or down, you expect them to find a place and then go right back in the other direction. That's called the whipsaw behavior. So I gave a lot of numbers because I was busy doing the live room, the analysis on my own charts. I have to update these pages. I have to play Sally, the customer service rep. And so I gave a few more numbers before the opening bell than I normally do, but here they are. 395.50. That's the pivot. You could see where this is going. 395.50 is the pivot. Below opens the door for 394.60, give or take. Just so we all get the visual under our belt, you see this zone in here, 394.60. Not to mention the second five-minute candle of the day. If they get below, 393.75 is a big spot. Then down to 393, give or take. If they get above the pivot, not just testing it, but if they get above it, it's the bull case, and they'll start working on the pre-market prices, such as 397 and 398. That's exactly what they did. But let's see what's happening as the day really starts to go. Just posting some numbers up north, 398, obviously, on the board. And then as we get closer to the opening bell, they're all over the place. Got to let them go for a while. It's bullish above the pivot, 398, give or take, is a target if they keep going. So what we're saying first out of the shoot is above the pivot, that's a big target up there. Not that they'll get there right away, but 398, they certainly did get there. That becomes a target. Now... After the opening bell, 394.50, give or take, is the next price below the pivot. That is important. Could produce a bounce. It did produce a bounce. But I'm a buyer at 393.75 down to 393. And there it is. I'm a buyer in that zone. They spiked it just a little bit. We had a backup number. They didn't even get to the backup number. Bunch of traders in the room got it. Traders inside the numbers got it. Everybody in the room heard my own system go off, order filled, order filled, all that stuff. It was kind of neat to have it happen in real time. I had a good time doing it with the members in the room. It was a lot of fun. A lot of work, a lot of challenging work for me, but a lot of fun. You got the point. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. By the way, what was the target really on the way back up on the trade? Well, 395 is a big fat round number, but 395 and 395.50, that was really the target. So in my back of my mind, right away, getting into the trade, I already knew the target. Why? Because they're going to run back to the pivot way more often than they don't. Could they have fell apart and collapsed all the way back down? Anything is possible, but under normal garden variety conditions, they're going to run a test of the pivot again. Read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. What about stocks on the move? There wasn't a lot on the board this morning in the pre-market. However, there were a couple, KBH and Roku. So we'll take a look at those charts. They both hit their objectives. You could see here KBH, KB Home getting a haircut or a buzz cut at the opening bell, 34.30. And the zone, the bottom end of that zone was 
75. You see what happened. They spiked it. They turned around. They went right back up in the other direction, providing the base hit minimum target and then somewhat of a minimum rocket ride higher. Nice trade for anyone that took it. I can safely say I didn't have enough hands to take these trades and do all that other work. How about Roku? Anybody take Roku? Getting a haircut at the open, came into the number 46, 45, had a nice rocket ride, one of those pullback higher low situations, and then finished near the highs of the day up over 49 bucks from an entry of 46, 45. That's why we take a profit, turn it into a risk free, emotionless trade, and you can afford to emotionally take the ride. If it's going to give you a ride the rest of the day, there's no reason to sell it. You have nothing to lose. Nice trade. IWM, you can see what's going on here. A nice big follow through day once again, well above those daily chart moving averages, now coming into an important zone over here. Now, is there an important number in here? Sure. There's important stuff. You have a breakdown candle high. They may be there tomorrow. They may be there next week unless they fall apart, but that's the first order of business. Then you have another one. Then you have some more stuff up here. All these are important pivots. What you don't know is which one is going to be the most important number, and part of that has to do with time. Time is more important than price, and when the market is out of time on this run, she will tell you. What's interesting with this one is, and this is something that the naked eye may or may not pick up, but this one is not necessarily an on-time situation just yet. The S&P is, and the IWM is not. So I find that interesting because essentially that means that if they so choose, the IWM can have some more upside for a few more days and still be in an on-time situation up to one of these important prices. So that's an interesting development from where I sit. Write that down, put it on a sticky. By the way, I want to jump back to the S&P for a moment because I had a good question. Hey, isn't there an inverse head and shoulders pattern on the S&P? And maybe so. And so here's the way I would be looking at this. So I've drawn this in before, and I like this trend line. It doesn't go point to point to point exactly, but it's close enough for using purposes, if you will. And it's really the same thing that the person asking the question about the inverse head and shoulders possibility, it's the same trend line, just looked at a different way. So what I will say is, if they do get above that trend line and close weekly above that trend line, not to say that the head and shoulders pattern will immediately play out and complete, that would be a huge run higher, but it will suggest that while above that trend line, there is nothing bearish on the tape. And we'll start there and morph into what happens after if that happens. Good question, though. Let's take the IWM one step farther and look at the monthly chart just to get a view of what's going on so we have an understanding of the really big picture. Now, this is still a bearish pattern until the point in which they break out above this range that they've been in for months and months and months. Now, if they do, that would essentially activate the 20 period moving average, meaning they would wanna run up there if they could sustain price above these highs. Now, there's a lot of individual pivots up here and you've got this big tail up here, but that's above the 20 period moving average. So it's really about this range here. So in concept, not using numbers, but using conceptually what's going on, breaking above the top end of this range will activate a run toward, if not to, the 20 period monthly moving average right now at around 199. So you have to round that and say around 200. That would be the bull case. In addition, what you would also be doing is closing above the high of this breakdown candle. That's also a big deal, monthly close. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Same routine. It's a nice breakout in a daily chart up to or heading up to these pivots up here. You don't know exactly what number it's going to be. At least 
I'm not going to tell you what numbers I think exactly it's going to be here in this video. But what we know from a big picture perspective is there's a lot of resistance up here. How do we know that? Well, it's very simple. The market runs up to this price and gets rejected. So that's the market's way of telling us that that price is important. Well, it ran close to that price and got rejected at a higher low situation over here. So now we know this price and this price creates a zone. That zone is important. Same thing with this third lower high situation. So now we have this zone up here. That is an important zone because the market was rejected three times up in that zone. Are they just going to blow through it like it's not even there? Or are they going to run some tests and have to eat some time off the clock? And that's just the way the market works most of the time. And that's why I bring this up. The Q people, and you can see this chart is weaker by nature. They've just now begun to approach the 100 period moving average and this breakdown candle high here at 283. So that's the number we can keep our eye on or the zone. The 100 period moving average up to 283, that's going to be overhead resistance until they can start pushing and closing above. By the way, don't forget two things. Number one, if you were in the live room today, then uh, please put some kind of comment under the video. If you had a good experience, if you think it was good, if you think it was worthwhile, any suggestions you have, get some comments under the video so I can understand what's going on and other people can see in real time what other people think. That's the whole idea. And the other thing is, remember what next week is. Next week is the first options expiration week of 2023. So therefore, we'll know this, that during options expiration week, and this is regular way options expiration, not the stuff that expires every day or every hour or every Wednesday or Friday, whatever it is, the regular stuff, the stuff from the old school people like me. All we need to know is weird stuff happens. How about the XLF? They didn't really do much today. Where are they? They're right here. They just haven't really been able to sustain price above just yet. That high is, that breakdown candle high is 35.90. And what we have today is a high of 36.06, closing price 35.85. And you know what comes next. There are no accidents nor coincidences. They did that on purpose. It's not a rejection. They just haven't closed above it yet. Smash Mouth, we've talked about this one before, specifically on the weekly chart, about this is a bullish thing going on. Big breakup candle, pullback. They started to run a test of the low, turn around instead, on time situation, now up into the 20, or sorry, the 50 period moving average on the weekly chart, breaking out above the moving averages on the daily chart. And you could expect overhead resistance to come in. And I think we discussed this last night, right around... 227, maybe 75, give or take, maybe up to 228. And then after that, you'll have this high up here that is 234.59. So that's my first price of overhead resistance or the next price of overhead resistance in Smash Mouth. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.